So now we've reached the end of a second pass through Frege's arguments about sense and reference. Frege's contribution is enormously significant because we want to understand points of view. And understanding a point of view means understanding not just which object somebody is perceiving or thinking about, but also how she's thinking about or perceiving those objects. How those objects are, as you might say, presented to her. Now that, put like that, seems almost trivial. But it was Frege's brilliant insight to see that that can create havoc for some otherwise quite natural and compelling theories about the nature of thought. In order to try to explain this to you, I took a kind of detour and introduced the notion of a proposition. A proposition is a pretty complicated abstract object to get your head around, a bit like number. Now, of course, we're all familiar here with numbers, but that's only because we've spent quite a bit of time learning about numbers. Uh, they are incredibly difficult to get your head around, and it's a sort of miracle that, you know, my kids, they go to this primary school, and they start off with no sense at all about what a number is, and they come out with facility using systems of number, to some extent anyway. Uh, likewise with propositions, there's a bit, big cost to get your head around the notion of a proposition. But once you've got there, like the notion of number, it makes thinking about a whole range of things much easier than it would otherwise be. In particular, it makes thinking about Frege's argument for postulating sense much easier than it would otherwise be, much clearer, because we can frame that argument by appeal to the notion of a proposition. The idea is very simple. What Frege has shown us is this. If we want to use propositions to distinguish the contents of mental states, then we'd better suppose that in those propositions, we don't use just the objects themselves, Charlie or whoever, but rather senses concerning those objects. The second thing we've seen is that when we ask, well, what are these senses? What is it that Frege is postulating substantively? As Campbell says, all that anybody has been able to think of is that different senses are descriptions. Now, Campbell himself opposes this idea and he offers an alternative, but he's right that none of these alternative ideas have yet gained a lot of traction. The simple, compelling, natural idea is that senses are descriptions. The problem, of course, is that senses can't be descriptions. This is the argument we've just seen. Senses are not descriptions. So I'm calling this a conclusion, but in a sense, it's not really a conclusion at all. What I've suggested is that we've got an enormous problem in something really basic. We want to capture the idea that point of view involves not just being related to some objects, perceiving or thinking about them, but also being related to them in a particular way. The problem is how to characterize those ways of being related to things, the ways that you perceive or think about things. It seems so obvious that there must be such a thing. Having a point of view is not just a matter of being related to objects, but perceiving them, thinking about them in certain ways. But when it can, comes to constructing a philosophical theory that respects that, we seem to run up against this awfully difficult problem.